We've just spent the night on the inner shell island as we canoe lock oar end to end. This is the third day of our five day expedition. Let's go. Today we woke early to an overcast morning where the low clouds sat on the top of the surrounding mountains. But with no hint of a breeze, it was a contrast to the previous day's paddle. The lock looked incredible, massive and majestic. It made us feel small and insignificant by contrast. These are some fantastic conditions for paddling. We've just set off from the island over there, paddled a couple of kilometers down the arm of the lock in a sort of westerly direction. You see the mountains dropping down into the lock side and up there high in that little re-entrant there's a hydroelectric dam. You can just see the pylon lines heading out along the edge of it. So we're going to continue just to get a view of that, quite an impressive structure. And then we're going to head northeast up along the western side of Loch Awe towards Kilburn Castle. <laughs> The Kruikan power station and dam is a pump storage hydroelectric power station sitting at 1,299 feet above Loch Awe. It's an impressive structure, but we didn't really see it even by drone flight. As we paddled northeast, the clouds began to reveal patches of blue sky. The huge mountain of Ben Kruiken became beautifully lit by mid-afternoon, but for now we were impressed enough with the sunshine that lit its heights. We rooted under an old bailey bridge towards the village of Orr. We passed the church at the south of the parish, St Conan's Kirk. And then we saw the Grand Loch Orr Hotel. The hotel was built in the year 1881 to accommodate the tourist boom in the Highlands and was built in the Scottish baronial style. It sits above its own rail station and commands a view across the water. Then we got our first sight of Kilchurn Castle. The castle sits at the northern tip of Loch Awe and marks our furthest point north. We have done 42 kilometers in three days. That's a marathon. <laughs> anyway, we've done it from tip to tip, so congratulations. We've arrived. We've done it. This is the North Pole. <laughs> Kilchurn Castle was built in the mid 1400s and it remained the base of the mighty Campbell clan of Glenochy for 150 years. 
After the first Jacobite rising of 1689, Kilchurn was converted into a garrison stronghold, but was abandoned by the end of the 1700s. The castle is isolated and can only be reached from the water or by a long footpath on a causeway. Having gone as far north as we planned, it was time to head south, leaving Kilchurn Castle behind for hopefully several more centuries in this idyllic location. We prepared for the paddle back to Innishale, our heads full of the mysteries of the castle, when we spotted a mystery of our own. In this land of folklore, had we seen the Loch Orr monster? On closer inspection, it was disappointingly only a branch of wood. It's easy to understand how legends develop in this landscape. We took one last look at Orr Village before launching our craft. circumnavigated the island. Having got back to what we now considered our island, we decided it was time for a swim. It's pretty cold. I don't think I'll be doing too much swimming. It's more a case of just a dip. Ah! He's in. Oh no, there's two oh. white things in the water. <laughs> We did it. It's not that bad. we sat around the campfire and ate Laurie's curry, we delighted in our camp spot, perhaps the best wild camp location either of us had ever been to. This looks wonderful. That was day three. Hello. A clear but mild night led to the mist developing over the loch. Hello. Hello. This time lapse captured the swirling mass of sprite like mist dancing over the loch surface. We 
packed up camp and made absolutely sure we left without a trace. Our homeward journey had begun. We've just set off from our island camp. We're heading south back down towards the car. We've got about 35 kilometers to do in two days. We were a little bit worried about the weather because the wind has been quite strong from the southwest, which meant that we could be facing a headwind for these next two days. But we've woken up to this absolutely glorious day. The mist burnt off quite early. Um, it's quarter to nine now. So we're really fortunate that uh, there's virtually no wind at all at the moment. The forecast is that it might start to blow from the east a bit later on. It's really quite sad to, to leave our little island. I'm going to name that island Milton Island, our wild camp location on Loch Orr. For our return journey, we've elected to go down the western side of the loch. We came up on the eastern side, so that way we've effectively circumnavigated the entire lock. It's really beautiful to see the lock from different perspectives. And we've got it all to ourselves. Absolutely nobody else about. Fantastic. Some of these little islands are man-made. Go back hundreds of years, people came out and put these rocks out here and made little islands for themselves to live on to keep away from the walls. I claim this island, Devam Island. <laughs> Just before North Point and the narrowest part of the loch, Highland cattle were bathing in the water. This long-horned bovine 
is a Scottish breed of rustic cattle. It originated in the Scottish Highlands and the Western Isles of Scotland and is also known as Calo cattle. We passed North Point where the old ferry used to ply across the loch, now long forgotten. It was a vast contrast to the agitated conditions of the Northwood Passage a couple of days ago. Leaving the last obvious civilization behind, the lock became more wild the further south we paddled. The high mountain range of Ben Cruigan appeared distant in our rear vision. We'd been really lucky with the wind, which had turned and was now again on our backs. We had paddled just over 12 kilometers before lunch. Headed down southwesterly past North Point, and we're at Inver Innan, just here where there's a little river enters into the loch. Perfect place for a lunch stop. We've been doing 12 and a half kilometres. Four egg omelette. Excellent. Excellent. Got some ham, tomatoes up here, and some cheese. That should do us. It's all right. Very good. Wow, what a lunch break. September in Scotland. After lunch, we pressed on toward the western village of Dalavich. We are at Dalavich. It is absolutely boiling. So much so that I've got in the lock. I'm going to take a dip. Well, what on earth is that? Some kind of hovercraft coming away. I haven't seen one of those in a long time. Two hovercraft. Opposite Dalavich, on the far side, we saw Inchconnell, an island with the castle ruins that we had explored two days previous. We paddled on, making the most of the conditions. A 
our fourth night was spent in a wooded glade just up from the beach. It's been an absolutely fabulous trip. We canoed far too far yesterday, something in the order of 30 kilometers. We ended up combining day four and five. Um, I'm not quite sure how that happened. I think we were just enjoying the weather we pressed on. This was going to be the campsite that I'd chosen for the last night. As it happens, we've got here one day early. So we're packing up now and we'll be setting off for Torren Bay and we'll be heading home. The end of an epic adventure. a very quick mention of the inevitable part of human living is also having to get rid of your personal waste so on this trip Laurie's brought along this portable toilet it's a folding system plastic seat you just put um, a plastic bag over the top of this do your business and then we've been putting it in our plastic box taking it away and disposing of it appropriately we haven't been digging any holes or leaving anything behind. Super important to respect the environment and take every last bit of your own waste back with you. Last little effort. Time for home. Well, as the sun rises over Loch Orr, it's time to complete this adventure. Thanks ever so much for following me. I hope the videos have entertained you. Please do contact me in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. And until the next time, happy paddling. <laughs>